This episode of the We Like Shooting Show is brought to you by Second Call Defense, Facts and Firearms, Swamp Fox Optics, Black Rhino Concealment, Manticore Arms, and Brownells. Welcome to the We Like Shooting Show, episode 333. Tonight we talk about Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Easy, uh, M2.0, something, something, Jericho 941, the open bolt, full auto 22, appendix carry for fat dudes and more. Our panel tonight is Jeremy Paz Derek from River's Edge Tactical in Valley City, Ohio. We got the machine gun Moses Aaron Krieger in the house. Uh, our special guest panelist tonight is Josh from Black Diamond Guns and Gear. My name is Sean Heron, and I want to welcome you all to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Josh, welcome to the show, man. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you here. You are a panelist tonight. You are not a f***ing guest, so we're not going to treat you, through, you with respect. We are not going to pay attention to your stupid opinions that we don't care about at all. Uh, okay. Is, do, is your cat melting next to you? Is that it? Is it? What happened to your cat? cat? No, that's my dog. That looks like a... It's got a head of... A, it's melting. It's like baby Yoda if he got stuck in a vat A of microwave. Acid. Well, a guy that looks like 250 pounds of chewed bubble gum better have a dog that looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. They always say dogs are like their owners, so I would say that's probably true. <laughs> no, that is. Uh, so, Josh, welcome, man. Uh, I've got a few things that I want to talk about tonight, but before we do any of that nonsense, let's talk about this. And uh, tonight, that's going to be Swamp Fox Optics, so go check them out. I have, uh, I've been talking to them a lot about some of the new stuff they have coming out. I'm actually really excited. It'll be announced at SHOT Show next week. And uh, let's see, this show actually comes out tomorrow, I believe, uh, which is just uh, the Thursday before a shot show. But yeah, Swamp Fox Optics, I know that if you have seen some of the stuff they've done in the past, like some of the features that we've been talking about that we really want, uh, they are coming up very, very shortly. And keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, save 25% off on everything that they sell. SwampFoxOptics.com. Coupon code is WLS15, and uh, that will save you more than anyone else's discount codes because we're the best. So Josh from Black Diamond Guns and Gear, this actually came uh, came to us recently. Someone was asking about appendix carry for fat guys. Now, Aaron and I are obviously mm. clearly qualified, at least in the fat dude department, but you've actually done some videos on this and you've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, so I kind of wanted to run through, like, what are the basic tenets of uh, – appendix carry for fat dudes because people think that it's like impossible that you can't do it. Now my belly doesn't actually like, I don't like, I don't know how to describe it without being like crude, but like, it doesn't like hang over my sack or anything. Um, yeah. but it's fat and like, I have to suck it in sometimes, but, uh, Josh, I think that, lay it down for us. I think that it's, it's not necessarily for like, you, you always seen that black dude that has his stomach and has like the egg mm-hmm. under his stomach. He picks it up, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not talking about that kind of concealed carry. We're talking about just you know somebody that's got a little bit of a pudge, that's got a little bit of hanging over, and maybe a fupa is what we're talking about. Okay. So when the way I've always done, I used to own a, a holster company and used to do a lot of holsters. Now I don't so much, but uh, I made mine for myself because I made it comfortable. I couldn't find anybody else to do it, so I made it to where the actual fire went lower down in my pants. And the way I did that was I basically brought the belt clip, which would normally be in the middle of the firearm or something like that. I just brought it up higher. And I just kind of trained myself to draw a certain way, like basically like a, a claw draw or whatever you want to call it, where your thumb goes over your sights and your pinky goes underneath your frame. And uh, and I've made it to where that is comfortable for me to, to ride like that all day. Because if I'm sitting down, most people that are skinny and stuff like that, the firearm goes up in front of their chest. Like when they sit down, the thing moves up with their stomach, right? Cause they don't have nothing there to push it down. But with a fat dude, it's not going to go in front of your stomach. Cause then you would have two feet of gun sticking out. So basically it goes in between your stomach line and your fupa kind of squish it down in between them. And uh, that's what this holster does. It basically makes it easier for you to sit down and not have to worry about it stabbing you in the gut all day long. Yeah. All right. So I carry appendix every single day. I've gotten used to it. And uh, for me, so I wear I wear a Black Rhino Concealment uh, ACS holster, which is their appendix carry system. And I've, I've done it actually a couple different ways. I, I've carried the Heron appendix, which I actually like a lot too. And I don't know, like on this one, I just have a wide belt clip that goes on my Blue Alpha Gear belt. 
and I carry mm-hmm. a six hour P365 in the ACS and it's super tiny. I pop it in and out of my belt. Like sometimes uh, when I drive, uh, I don't want it in there, but like, so it pushes, that's what she said. right. Uh-huh. right. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get in there, but yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so let me say this. Uh, it sits where the, the stem meets the root. Like, all right. So my yeah, muzzle okay. right now is pointed at the top of my, like where, right, right. where the goes into the FUPA. Yeah. Like the root. Punching you basically. It, it, it is, but it like, so it's not uncomfortable. That's just like where everything is resting. But I, I do actually keep my belt tight. Now, Josh, Aaron, do you guys keep your belts super tight? Uh, yes, because yeah. I have no waist, I have no weight, uh, I have no hips or butt. So if I don't, my, my pants will fall same down. Boat. Same yeah. Boat. No, I got so the donk, Basically, donk. I don't wear mine right in the middle. I wear it off to like almost like one o'clock almost. I, I don't wear, I wear like right above, not right above my, but to the right of it, basically. So I wear mine at like uh, 1150. Mine's at about, mine's at about 1207. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it's easier that way for me. I got a callus there already. It's already rubbed it. So, oh, that seems uncomfortable. I, like, I don't have a callus, which is weird because I do carry every single day there. Um, now, Jeremy, you're not an appendix carrier, right? No, I pretty much carry three okay. o'clock, three to five o'clock on the hip. Open carry pretty much 24 7, right? Well, no, I mean, I put a jacket over it. It's technically concealed carry. True, true. Yeah. It's IDPA conceal. And as as a bigger I would, guy, I would consider that concealed carry. I mean, I, yeah. would, I would imagine that. Oh, no, and as is. as a bigger guy, I almost prefer to do the uh, uh, outside the waistband. But you know, at the same time, uh, sometimes that's just not an option. Yeah, if now, nobody can see it though. It's concealed. It is right. It is. So I guess like the question that we've been having is like, how do fat guys carry concealed? And I'm like, well, I just f-ing do it. Like, I don't. I never had to really I think think fat about guys have. The easier time carrying on the hip as opposed to in the waistband. Yeah, because like skin time. guys have a hard time. Like, look at Judson with a gun on his hip. That sticks like four feet off of him. Yeah, because <laughs> right. it's resting on his hip yeah. bones. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that, that, if you go from his shoulders to his feet, it's a straight line. If you even if you have a gut that sticks outward, like you get a little drapage effect with a with a loose shirt. And I've never met a fat guy that wears tight clothes. That's true. I mean, you can't. <laughs> if you're fat enough, everything is tight. That's true. I've uh, seen eight XLs. Okay, I never saw that. Well, you know, also there's that there's the fact that we we have those clothes that we'll fit into again someday. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I wore these pants last year. I know I can fit it. I just keep going and tie it. <laughs> now I know what a sausage feels like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fat guy in some I'm little pants. Can of busted biscuits. Now, so I've actually used the uh, the soft loops as well. I don't like those just yeah. personally because I can't pop it in and out of my belt as much because like when I'm sitting at my desk at the office or even just now, right before I put it in my belt, like I have my gun sitting right here. So if I need it, I grab it, pick it up, pull it and engage whatever threat there might be. Um, and just, I, I do that for a little bit of comfort. Yeah. Those are the soft loops that I'm talking about. Uh, I generally don't carry those anymore and I've practiced drawing pretty often. So I have just the hard belt clip for my 1.75 inch belt system. And- <laughs> I'll tell you the reason why I went to soft loops. I went to uh, James Jagger's class and he basically told me, uh, you will find out the, 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 the strength of your equipment today, basically. And about three times I had one of the ones that was just like the fat girl clip that went over your belt, like the little flat flush clip. And, uh, it was plastic, and it came. I guess where I'm a bigger guy, and I when I, if I move like I'm getting down or I'm laying down or whatever, that thing doesn't stay on my belt as good. So it, it popped off when I tried to draw like three or four times, and ever since then I've used soft, soft loops. Makes sense. Yeah, it's just I don't know. I like I like them, and they are good, and they work well. But just my use case, like I take it off a lot. Like if I'm in the car, yeah. I literally pull it out of my belt and I put it right next to me so that I can get it, get to it super quick. Uh, it's not behind my seatbelt and I put I don't have to put my seatbelt behind it. Like I, I've done all the the yeah. vehicle interdiction classes and things like that. I understand what the challenges are. Do you have a wing on yours? I do. I do have a wing. Um, what does the wing do, Josh? Wing pushes it back into your stomach more, so it'll be more concealable, basically. So the frame will not be as visible. 
So one thing I actually did is I pulled the top screw out of my wing. So and, oh, and I, nice. I keep my wing actually it's tight, but it's actually loose so I can adjust it as I need to. If I need to adjust the cant, I just pull my wing out just a little bit more, which pushes it back. Nice. Um, that that's not how they come standard from the manufacturer. It's just what I do. So like if I cant it just a little bit more, pull my wing out just a little bit more. So it rides at that same level. Um, kind of the first thing I did. And one thing I did actually is I had some longer loops. Uh, they were the, not the, the short flat ones. They were the, the long loops. And when yeah. I had a holster, like uh, the Heron her holster from black Rhino concealment, I would actually put a longer loop on one of the sides so that I could push the gun further down on my belt line, exposing just the grip so I could still grab it with that claw. And you mentioned that, Josh, where you put basically thumb on the back of the slide, which is yeah. the same method that Scott Jedlinski from Modern Samurai Project teaches uh, as well. Oh, as, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, he teaches that grip where you basically get your hand down there, <laughs> index your good grip, thumb on the back of the slide, draw, present, and fire. I mean, you're putting your thumb over the top of your sights just help. It helps you grab it. I mean, it helps you make sure you get a, a firm grip on it. The yeah. only problem is that with the fat guy holster that we've created, you can't get your fingers underneath the front of the frame. You can only get like a pinky on the bottom. So basically, you have to depend on your thumb to go over those sights and your pinky to be on the bottom of that. And uh, I mean, yeah, I agree with that. I really like his draw uh, mechanic. Because that way you get basically fingers on the grip. You don't have to go back behind it, which especially if you're a fat dude, that is especially tough. Like getting your thumb down back behind the gun where the gun is pressed up. The gun and the holster are pressed up against the FUPA. And yep. uh, so you basically thumb goes on the back of the slide. Fingers grip it. You pull it out. Once you, one, once you get that, you can establish that good grip as you come out, press out, and get on target. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I mean, the... Uh... That, that's just the that's the most comfortable way I've found to do it. And the, what you were talking about, but putting on the belt, I I wear blue after blue belt. But I wear the. Uh, do you wear the Cobra or do you wear like the EDC low profile model? These days, I actually have the EDC low profile, which is the just the Velcro, because I have the double belt system. So I wear the inner belt as my EDC belt or as my everyday belt. Oh. And then whenever I go to the range or something, I just put on the the upper uh, out outer battle belt style with all my pouches and yeah. holsters and everything like that. I use a low profile belt all the time too. That's the one I usually use. Yeah. And uh, me as well, actually being that Velcro man, and you just pull it off. And I mean, that thing slides right out of there. It's, it's, I, I, I like the soft loops, but they're not for everybody, but that, but the way that this, the way that this holster comes is with soft loops. So the soft loops are actually more expensive than like the regular belt clips or whatever. So that it costs a little more, but other than that, that's the way it comes. Yeah. No, I like them. So I guess if I had to kind of break it down, at least my advice on like appendix carry for fat dudes, I'd be like, honestly, just do it, man. Like get a pistol or even like unload your firearm and put it down the front of your pants just so you can kind of feel what it's going to be like. You have to, when I drop something and I have to bend over to pick it up, I do it just a little bit differently, but I can't really necessarily explain how to do that because I don't understand your, your makeup, your mechanics and your physiology. Uh, but what I have to say is like, you just have to do it, whether like literally fold a piece of paper four ways to create a little pocket and then put your mm. unloaded gun inside that and then put it in your waistband and then walk around with it, drive with it, like just yeah. sit down on the couch with it. Um, very Basically, often Basically, your FUPA and your stomach become the sandwich bread and your gun becomes the peanut butter. That's just the way you got to do it. Yeah. You can't you can't have it sticking in front of your stomach. It doesn't work like that. You can do that if it gets uncomfortable, like when you're riding for a long period of time or something like that. Just pull it out, put it in front of your stomach. But for the most part, you got to have it in between both. Yeah, Aaron, if you had to yeah. explain appendix carry for fat dudes, how would you do it? Uh, basically, I would. My advice would be to find something. Look, looking at yours, you have a very high back. Um, and mine as well. No, you um, you, have I, a, I, you have a really high back. We have low backs. Okay, so mine <laughs> has a very high back. So let me put my the gun in here real quick. Yeah. So you could you can see it, it covers the, the entire thing. One of the things you'll find as a fat guy is when you stick your gun in your holster and you have a little bit of belly hanging over, you'll pinch yourself between the gun and the holster as you stick it in. So you're going to want something that, that kind of pushes your body away from uh, the, the firearm sliding in and out. 
That's something yeah. that you got to look for. And then also, mine has the uh, the little kick pad here as well. Got to find my camera here. Kick pad as well. And I w- I go with the yeah. I go with the loops as well. The snap in loops. Though, See, I, what I like about those is that they'll move too. They're not no not they're not necessarily stationary. They will yeah. cant with your body as you move. Right. And and there's another series of holes here in case I want to lower it or raise it uh, on the holster yeah. itself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just important. These are the things that I would talk about if someone was asking me about uh, fat guys and carrying. Yeah, in general, I'm just like, you have to do it. And I get that, like, buying a holster and then finding out that you hate it sucks. But, I mean, maybe spend five day, you know, five minutes a day for a week or so, ten minutes a day for a week, uh, literally just maybe putting some paper around it, putting it in your belt, and unload it, clearly. Because paper is not going to provide any kind of protection or responsibility or anything like that. But uh, just doing it, like walking around, doing doing your choring around the house, like maybe driving to the grocery store, like whatever it happens to be, um, you, you got to do it. Because I read about appendix carry. I talked about it on the show. I did it. But until you do it, you don't really understand exactly how it's going to be. And when you get into a vehicle – is one of the things that I really want to point out here. It's a little bit better appendix carry because now it's in the front. It's easily accessible. And I'm going to talk about making it easily accessible in just a second. But if you're three o'clock, your gun is basically back behind the seatbelt up against where you plug the seatbelt into the car or the truck or the SUV or whatever. And that that's difficult. But when you appendix carry, even if you have to ride your belt up just a little bit to pop the gun out a little bit, I always put my seatbelt behind the gun so that if I ever have to draw, It's not going to be in the way. I'm not going to be battling my seatbelt, which pops the gun out just a little bit more. So if I actually have to draw, it's, you know, lift the concealment garment, grab the, grab the firearm with that claw, which is that thumb on the back of the slide fingers, grabbing the grip, draw the firearm, build my grip on the way out. And then I can place pretty good uh, rounds on target and in whatever threat I might deem necessary. I think a lot of people are afraid of the kydex. They're like, Oh, you know, I don't know about carrying it in kydex because uh, you know, it may be too thick or whatever. It's nowhere near as thick as leather. You can't appendix carry with a leather or, or like a, I think even a hybrid holster appendix carrying. Cause there are some out there that are hybrid holsters that do appendix carry and those are thick too. So I think you have to try a, a appendix with kydex because it barely adds anything to your firearm. I mean, like you said, putting a piece of paper on it, that's about it. Honestly. I mean, it doesn't add anything to it. So it's the most comfortable way to conceal it. Yeah. Aaron. Oh, well, I guess my questions would be, uh, I saw in the uh, live chat, uh, some people asking what brand holsters you have. Uh, what, what are you rolling with, Sean? This is the uh, Black Rhino Concealment ACS. Josh? And, and- I uh, just recently launched my brand of holsters, and we partnered with JX Tactical. <laughs> and uh, so basically, you go to JX Tactical and look for the fat guy holster, and it's on there. So that's what I'm carrying. Oh, nice. nice. And mine uh, is the CCS, is the uh, Black Rhino Concealment CCS. Holster. Yeah. So, Josh, you had the holster named after you and you chose the fat guy. <laughs> well, I am a fat guy. So, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it went after the video. Like, I put a video up one day. Honestly, what happened was we were kind of short on content. And I was like, man, I got to put up a video. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and so I basically came up with the idea of, like, you know, a lot of people ask me how I appendix carry. So, I straight up just made the video. I was like, look, guys, I'm going to show you my gut, and I'm going to show you my fupa, and I'm going to show you all this stuff. So if you don't want to see it, don't watch this video. And uh, and I did. And it's, it kind of got you know a bunch of views on it, and everybody started wanting them. I mean, we've sold a lot. I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't expect to make them. That's the reason why I had to go with a company to actually make the holster for me. It's a company I did a video on in the past, and they made awesome, awesome holsters. So when everybody started, you know, wanting these holsters, I was like, man, I don't, I don't have enough time to keep up making these holsters and, and, you know, YouTube and all that sort of and then my 40 hour job and all that stuff. So stuff it over to him and uh, he kind of took care of it from there. But, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where the name came from the YouTube video basically. And I call it, you know, fat guys can append to care too, basically. Yeah. We literally, we, we've had a couple questions about this, but the most recent one was just like, I don't know, within the last day or so. And, I think a lot of people are interested in maybe I think a lot of fat dudes are intimidated by this. I know I was, um, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the easiest thing to do would be 
What? Or at least not the easiest, but the best thing to do. What? You lose weight? Happy to that. <laughs> So uh, Matt M said, "This guy needs to get. I weigh my- three fifty. <laughs> he needs to get on my six How tall, how tall are you? How tall am I? Six two. Jesus. <laughs> Jeremy is judging so hard right now. Yeah, it's all right. I was just saying, I got five inches on you, and you got fifty pounds on me. Sixty yeah, pounds. No, on me. believe me. Well, it's all muscle, though. You guys see this guy, but he's the he's more confident than you are, Jeremy, because Josh is all over the internet with the shirt off." That's true. Uh, I don't know if that's confident. Would you call Chris Farley a confident man? Yeah, yeah. confident yeah, as absolutely. F- no, that was that was drug fueled. Please laugh at me because he hated himself. Mm. What do you think I'm doing besides the drug fuel? <laughs> so, so I have a picture of Jeremy with his shirt off. Every, everyone <laughs> and does. Sean, and Sean's hand in his crack. So, do you guys want to see that? For the record, he do you did. have a picture of my. He had lifted Not me anymore. up and put me on his shoulder and was spinning me around like a helicopter. And I was just, I was grabbing for whatever was available. And I just saw like the rabbit trail. So I grabbed that. <laughs> no, I was spinning you around. Aaron pants me and then took a picture of it. <laughs> I know. And then he wants and to then, be like, look, Sean checked your oil. I don't know what that's all about. It was at about three quarter full. <laughs> yeah, you're down a court. So, at where was this at? Uh, oh, one of the many Airbnbs that we destroyed. Georgia, I think it was Guns of the One Eleventh. We were sharing an Airbnb, sharing his Airbnb, and Faxon was there. No, they weren't. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were they there were. earlier that night. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so like we were just uh, drunk, and it was in my room, and we were all in there just like hanging out. I was trying to go to fucking sleep or something, if I remember right. And, uh, yeah, like, so Jeremy and I are like horsing around, wrestling and whatnot. And then the next thing we know, there's a big, huge hole in the drywall. Yeah. Who bounced off? The, that was you, right? You bounced off the bed. And no, Jeremy, I pushed Jeremy. He bounced off the bed and, and put a f-ing Jeremy size hole in the drywall. Like, yeah, my heel went through the wall. <laughs> so no, my question is after the drywall through the paneling. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> If I do this Airbnb on my name, is this going to be a problem later on? Not for oh, us. Yeah. yeah, for you, maybe. <laughs> we we have a yeah. five-star rating. Uh, May, <laughs> May from uh, C and Arsenal says, it's not gain less the b- touch. And then she said, bow chicka wow wow. <laughs> and well, then the yeah, fish that's said, that's no, May. Sometimes in multi-penetration, b- touch hazard of the act and swapping fluids makes it gay. Okay. Yeah, there was, there was that. Now, Josh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, so I think we've covered Appendix Gary, literally you guys have to try it, uh, is FFL and SOT. Like you and I have been talking about this recently. Yeah. Um, did Was just like the, have you been seeing it? Was it something you considered? Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about like your decision-making process and thinking about maybe possibly doing that. So the thing is, is that, you know, small Josh, who's not here right now, knows more about this than I do, and he knows more about the laws and the paperwork and all that other bullshit. <clears throat> but uh, so our uh, want to do this is basically uh, off of us doing YouTube and having the content and everybody needing to send us shit. And you know, we have to go to Tennessee Silencer to use a, a suppressor or whatever that somebody wants to send us, and we can't you know take it to our place and our because we have a private range on our own land and all this other stuff, but we can't take it there. We don't have an SOT, um, so or an FFL or whatever. So, our our need our need to do that is basically so we can get the stuff to us versus having to use a third party to use all of our uh, stuff to make content with, and also because we want machine guns. Yeah, no, I I totally get it. So, when you are considering at the very beginning, because uh, everyone on the show except you has FFLs, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, it's coming. It's coming. We gotta wait till what, like J- July or something like that, because it's like five hundred bucks, right? No, dude, you need to oh, literally yeah. start like maybe at the end of this month or early next month for an FFL. Oh, I thought you, you know it doesn't need to be because it lasts for three years. Yeah, but don't forget. So, nope. it, so Josh, what you're talking about is you have to pay for your SOT every July first, Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. So depending on which one you get, ours is five hundred. Uh, so basically, you want to get your FFL ahead of time. And then uh, it takes about another month to get your SOT once your FFL is granted. If you know, once you have an FFL, getting an SOT is easy as 
because it's not okay, an application. Well, it's just you become a, a taxpayer. You have to you have to have a place though for it to actually happen. And right now we're in the process. You have to have a place, right? And you have no. to have a safe and all that shit, right? Nope. You do have to have nope. a physical location with an address. Yes, yes, you do. That's well, yeah. You actually have to have like a house. So, but yeah, yeah. What Josh was getting ready to say is that he's building a house. Yeah, it's just not done yet. I think it'll be done in the next like thirty days. Dude, okay, well, start the process now with the address for your FFL so that mm-hmm. – because when the house is done in 30 days, cause it's going to take about 30 days for them to go through your application and approve it for the right. ATF to come out and, and talk take to about you. 60, they have 60 days to process your application. Yeah, so okay. start it now. Yeah, so start it now. Even if you come out and you say this is going to be it and it's not done yet, they're okay with that. Because okay. they, when they come to your house, your your place of business, your house, whatever, they're not they don't inspect it. They don't look for your safe. They just they sit down and they go through all the rules and regulations, and that's it. They don't they don't like it. It's not a process of them going. Well, you need uh, cameras, and you need this, and you need that. No, they don't do any of that. They just say this is these are the rules. This is how you fill out this form. It's two hours of how to fill out basically, form. Basically, it's them telling you what you need to do so that when you f- up later, they can say, "Well, we told you what you needed to know." Yeah. You now, can't say, well, here, I don't know how to do that. There's guys here that we're friends with, and they have them. They're like, man, these guys are not out to f- you, basically. And everybody thinks that they are. He's no. like, you know, they're, they're not here to do that. They're, they're here to help you out, really, because they're not going to they're not gonna look to f- you up, basically. It's going to be you doing it on your own. Every IOI that I've ever dealt with, um, and I actually have quite a bit of experience, not only in getting my FFL, but also in criminal investigations uh, at – as it goes with IOIs, like they're mostly gun guys. Like they like guns. Dude, mine was cool. As like he walked into the office, he walked by my door and I was like, uh, can I help you? Cause he was wearing f-ing jeans and a hoodie. And yeah. he's like, uh, are you Sean? I was like, yeah, get my draw ready. And no, are you Sean? Are you Sean Heron? Yeah, you're served. <laughs> okay. Yeah, also it. had that happen, so I was a little nervous. But yeah, then he's like, shows me his badge, his B A T F E badge, and I was like, oh, hey, okay, cool. I didn't expect you to be like business or uh, you know, like couch casual. Uh, but yeah. it was cool, and like he was a gun dude. He was like totally cool. Um, he didn't let on whether I was going to be approved or not, but clearly he knew because I got my F F L like in record time. Uh, but yeah, no, it, I would, I would start pretty soon and it's what 150 bucks every three years for your FFL. Yeah. That's not too bad. And I think you use rocket more. Or, yeah. Rocket rocket FFL. FFL. Yeah. 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 That's what we're going to use. Yeah. We it helped. Just, we really, it, it really did help. So Jeremy, you did not use rocket FFL. You just did it. Like you can read the form, go through the, the expanded notes in like at the end of every document and figure it out by yourself, but I really didn't think it was that hard. No, it, it wasn't I did not hard. Think it was hard to fill the form out, send it in, pay the money, and talk to the people when they showed up. It really wasn't hard. I I didn't even. I will be perfectly honest. I didn't even take the class ahead of time. Like I had been through it a couple times, just like paging through it real fast to see if there was anything. Where I really got value out of it was like I'm filling out this form, and I'm like, uh, what the does this mean? Like, do I put this? Do I put that? And then I would go to the section in rocket FFL and like read it and be like, Oh, okay. Well, clearly he tells you specifically what you need to put in that field. Um, I had a lot of challenges. So in Colorado Springs, you have to, you have to be fingerprinted and uh, well, l- let me rephrase that to get your FFL. You have to be fingerprinted, photographed, background checked and all that good stuff. But in Colorado Springs, like, you cannot just go get fingerprinted by a law enforcement agency, not only the County Sheriff, but also the Colorado Springs police department. They will not do your fingerprints, but the FFL requires you to have your fingerprints done on a very specific form and card by a law enforcement agency. So when I had this question, uh, I had to figure out what the answer was and rocket FFL helped me with that. I had a zoning issue because I am in a commercial space and I am zoned for commercial uh, and limited mm-hmm. retail, but I was applying for a manufacturing FFL and the, the IOI from the, the BATFE. He had questions about that and I had to go figure it out. But if I would not have had rocket FFL, I wouldn't have been able to figure out what I needed to do. Like I literally got a letter that I copied and pasted to my local zoning department. And he was like, yeah, that'll be cool. And then that email back from him with 
yeah, that'll be cool, was literally when I gave the ATF and got approved. Yeah, so like it's stuff like that, just stuff that's kind of questionable, and it's not even really that expensive. It's like under fifty bucks. Yeah, I had I had that because I'm not in the manufacturing. I'm not in like the industrial part. Yeah, but I manufacturers. I'm you know, like I'm not manufacturing anything. Um, and then I had explained to the zoning board like manufacturer FFL just allows me to like build guns that are already yeah. made, and they're like, uh, I'm like I'm not gonna be like in there like mass producing shit. I'm not building a fucking metallurgy. I'm not building a forging plant. We want the we want the SMP for two reasons. One, so we can have full auto stuff. The other, so we can uh, actually do stipple work. So we're going to try to start getting into that too and trying to sell that as a, as a side gig, I guess. Well, I think the big important thing is to do that. Oh, uh, really? You don't have to yeah, have manufacturing, just a, I was, a one. I was trying to use that as an excuse to actually get. Well, it's not an excuse. Mean, you need, okay, so you need the 07 manufacturers FFL to get the class two SOT so you can build your own machine guns because it's a lot fucking easier than getting law letters unless you got to hook up with law enforcement. But even the ATF is starting to crack down on law agencies that just have like a buddy buddy relationship with the place and just sign up. Yeah. What is Podunk three depth three officer god thing want to look at a 240 golf for <laughs> so people like in the chat sorry people in the chat are like uh, talking about ffls but dude I, i'm like i almost think that everyone should get an ffl like that's why we're talking about it because i'm like yeah it's yeah. it's a great thing and honestly if you could be a part of putting more firearms into legal gun owners hands in the united states like why oh, build all the machine guns that way they're like oh <laughs> 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 common use yeah yeah Here's your common use. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I think people are like really confused about this and like nervous about this, but it's actually not too shabby. I use software for my bound books. Jeremy, you use oh, software man. that was developed by his brother. I use like uh, one that I pay for and it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I use a paper. I just write everything down. I'm not, I'm not pushing high volume here. So it's not that hard to keep track and I'm not, and I don't have the SOT portion, so I don't have to have, you know, the extra information available. Uh, an interesting question from uh, Fire Toad Forge is: uh, Am I comfortable uh, because I have a home FFL? With my address being out there, um, and you know what? I took a lot of measures to make sure that my house is secure and safe. Bef- actually, before I got the FFL, I spent probably about close to seven eight hundred dollars in security cameras, motion sensors. I live in the middle of the, the country, so I have a lot of stuff around the house let me know when someone's coming towards the house so that yeah, I can you're, you're a little ways off the road you have a nice little buffer there yeah so i mean yes i i am comfortable with it and you know there's enough guns hidden or in plain sight around the house that i'm not really worried if something happens that i there's be something within reach for me to protect the house with Is that a jug of sunny d yeah are you thirsty, dude? <laughs> Check, this out. Check this out. I was talking to my kid the other day about snapple and i said like told him about my favorite one and he found it and bought it for me is that nice that is nice yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Funk Master Apple, Fu- Apple. Funk Master Fat said, "If you have an SOT, do you still have to pay the two hundred dollars tax stamp when you SBR yeah, guns or get cans?" What? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Sean is talking. talking. I can't hear him at all. That's weird. Really? Did you block him? Because Re- some people do that sometimes. <laughs> Refresh. No. So the question is, do you have to pay a tax stamp when you get uh, the SOT? No, you don't. You just file a form three, or whoever's going to send it to you files a form three. Or if you're going to do an SBR, you file a form two, which is a notification to the ATF. Tell Josh to refresh. Josh, refresh. Josh, refresh. <laughs> the nice part is you're not with a with a form with a form one. You're requesting permission from the government to uh, manufacture manufacture a uh, SBR a uh, suppressor of uh, whatever. Um, with a with an SOT, you're notifying the government that you've already made it. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I don't know. All right. Clearly, people, uh, I, I think that getting an FFL is an awesome thing. And it gives you some great freedoms. I am also in the business of selling firearms. I've had mine for like a couple months now, but I've already sold 12 guns. That's pretty good. Now uh, do you have to have so many done, or you have to have so many transfers. No, you just there's have, not like a set number. You have to be in the business uh, of selling firearms. That that is another thing. Uh, as per Kleckner and Rocket FFL, 
Uh, Philip Z says, Esper Kleckner, you don't get or have an SOT. The LL, LLC, FFL, or you are an SOT, a special occupational taxpayer. That is correct. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that. Let's talk about SHOT Show. Now, Josh, you guys are not going to SHOT Show. You're going to NRA, but is there any stuff that you've seen that you're like, uh, oh, I'm real curious about this? Bye, curious. I, I'll be honest with you. I have been not a... Uh super into seeing the new things. I kind of wait until NRA comes out for me to see them, I guess. Okay. Well, my plan to steal your ideas for shot show just <laughs> fizzled. <laughs> <laughs> We've never been to shot show, man. We don't, I don't even know what it's like over there. I just know that you get to shoot stuff. It's, uh, yeah. it's, the between, it's yeah, basically a lot of blisters on your feet. I don't get, um, I don't you get any. You end up kicking a bunch of wheeled carts. True. Um, I've heard you get sick. sick. Um, you end up hating, uh, the industry that you're in for at least that week. Um, you will hear more FUD lore and see, see? more and see more FUDs walking around than you've ever seen before. Cause you got to remember shot show is a trade show for yeah. gun store owners. They go there and make orders and purchases and talk with their reps and stuff like that. It's not for media. We are a minority walking around that place. They don't even want us there. Yeah. They don't want yeah. us there. We are annoying. Yeah, we're annoying. Yeah. So, They're trying to make the, sense. The guys that are doing the YouTube stuff there where they're covering the events, like TFB TV, the Gun Collective, all this stuff, those guys, that's that's their job. This is this is not my job. I have a 40-hour job. So I, I, I do this, I do YouTube on the side. Uh, so to me, it's not, it's not worth it to go out there, honestly, because, it, I mean, who's going to – it's just not worth it for us to go out there. It's too it expensive. Is. It is. And uh, it honestly, is. The, the, what, we like hanging out with you guys and hanging out with all the guys that are, go to the you know the NRA and stuff like that. So that to us is the reason why we go to these things. It's not necessarily to get content. And I know a lot of guys go out there and film and they get content all the entire time they're out there. And uh, that's just, I'm, I'm too, first of all, too lazy to do that. And second of all, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> so, but so it's valuable think, uh, in that there's a lot of networking that's done just with companies. Like we get nothing from walking the floor because we don't film content because nobody gives a f- about that content. Like we try that f- dude, whether it's uh TFB, I don't whether think it's, anybody would care about us at no, all. Well, no, whether it's go, like we used to race around the floor and try to like get the scoop on everybody. And then we would run to the media room and edit something real quick and then upload it. It was just a waste of time like no one cares about shot show content if you go look at it if you look at the the gun collective tfb all that stuff like their their shot show videos don't do for traffic because no one else cares about it they'll they'll see an article on guns.com or something or ammo land and they'll they'll go look at it real quick and then they'll they'll do a thing there's very few uh content creators that have videos do well from shot show we we quit doing it four years ago Oh God, like our yeah. second year there, third yeah. year there. So this is my sixth shot show. And yeah, I think after the second year we stopped doing any kind of content whatsoever, but the, the relationships and the after stuff, like, and honestly for us, like we will go and my goal next week is to walk around and to honestly just like find companies and people and things like that to be on the show. And yeah, exactly. That's yeah. where we get value out of it. So yeah, you should definitely go at some point. Uh, just understanding that like, I'll go, but I'll probably just be hanging out trying to meet people. Like you said, I, yeah. won't, I won't be doing videos and all that. Shit. I just, I, it, it, to me, like you said, it, it seems like a waste of time for me to do it. First of all, we don't have, we don't have the audience to cater to, 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 to watch that. Shit. We just don't. And we don't have the numbers. So it's pointless for us to go out there and take all that time and do race up to the media thing. Like you were talking about. I, I didn't even know they had that actually until I heard about it from, uh, I think Izzy. Um, but they have, you know, the whole media room stuff, which is pretty cool, but I just think it would just be, oh, and it's way the fuck out of the way. They like make you like, <laughs> yeah, <leave. laughs> they're like, get the fuck away from us, dude. It, Izzy said he stays in there like all day. Oh, he does. Oh, all he day. Does. Izzy. Yeah. Izzy does. Aaron and I See, like now they have an editor. I don't have an editor. So it would be me in there. So I'd have to run back and forth. And go with a bag of Taco Bell and doesn't move. Yeah. But yeah. now. Aaron and I, our tradition is always we bring Izzy soft drinks uh, just throughout the day. Like every time we go in, we'll bring Izzy a drink just to just to make sure he's like taken care of. Yeah. 
No, but like, yeah, so I, SHOT Show, uh, I will tell you if you won't tell us what you're excited about. I'll tell you some of the things that I'm excited about. I'm excited to see a thing from Recover Tactical. Uh, I'm going to check out some stuff from Franklin Armory. I'm excited to see the new Vortex Optics 1-10 uh, LPVO. Nice. Uh, yeah. Swamp Fox Optics has cool stuff. They actually have a booth at the SHOT Show. I'm going to stop there. I'm very excited, very excited about something from Angst at Arms. Uh, I'm excited. the new Glock 44? No. Shut the f- Yeah, get the f- <laughs> Get the f- get out of here. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited to see something from Blackwater Weapons. Uh, let's see. Cloud Defensive has two new lights that I'm excited to see about. I just added someone who's watching uh, Treyarch Systems. I just watched, or I, I just saw a comment about them. Uh, added them to Treyarch, see. don't they make Call of Duty? No, different different people. But if they're going to be at SHOT Show, I'm like, I, I put them as a note to go see. You ever, you ever heard of Deadfoot Arms? Uh, yeah, I, the folding AR. Yeah, I, I talked to them. I don't know if they're gonna have a booth or not. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I, I talked to them. They agreed to send something. Uh, Fire Toad Fortress. Didn't Sean talk about Imperens a while ago? If he leaves his suppressor in the house and is amazingly gorgeous female, is in the house alone, she's technically in possession of it and can get in trouble. Yeah, actually. Um, but Sean is not the well, owner of my my suppressors. The LLC is. I'm the managing partner of the LLC. Mm-hmm. I would have to put it, I would have to have it in a safe that she doesn't have access to if I kept it in the house. And I would have to add the house or I'm sorry, the apartment as a, as an offsite storage location uh, before I was able to do that. I think you just read that because it said uh, the gorgeous <laughs> girlfriend part. <laughs> Humble brag. Hey, I if there's always a ways around it, why not? Yeah. So, Go! Don't forget to go see the taser round shot shell thing. Yeah, yeah I remember I talked about it a couple shows ago. I do, but what, what company was that? Oh uh, Jesus, I don't know. But Morgan Freeman, just for him. So I'll tell you this: if you have something you want us to go okay. see, like I've got my list of stuff, but I definitely would love it if you would send it to us at automated at we like shooting dot com or we like shooting dot com slash contact uh, is where you can do that as well. But yeah, I mean. I don't think I've been this excited for SHOT Show in several years. I'm just excited because Aaron's not going. I didn't go last year either, though. <laughs> so who's going with you? Yeah, but I don't think I went last year. Either. Yeah, you did. It was just you and me. Yeah, it was just you. No, it was the year before I didn't go because I was building the range. Yeah, you and I, dude, last year we had a f-ing blast. Yeah, we did. It, it was great, actually. <laughs> it was one of my favorite SHOT Shows. No, there was a lot of dead weight that wasn't there. Uh, Nick? Oh, Not you, Aaron. Well. Is Nick? <laughs> what Nick either? Oh. <laughs> Wait, what are you trying to say, Jeremy? Just, just f-ing say it. I'm saying the f-ing wasn't there. Oh my god! Wow. So who's going this year? Uh, Nick, yeah. Jeremy, myself, and uh, yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> if I, if I had to go, like, don't you have to get like a approved and stuff like that through like a, a whole thing? Yeah, to be approved as media is a, a little bit of work. Um, you literally have to be. So I will say that our first year at SHOT Show, someone cut in line from me, and they had a badge that had a Tumblr website on it. And I went to check out, because I was so f-ing pissed because he got in front of me, that I went and checked out his Tumblr. And he had like 10 subscribers to his Tumblr, but that was like what he yeah. got legitimately. But they have really cracked down on it. So media is difficult. Getting into range day, you have to be invited by a company. Uh, you have to have a company be like, oh, I want this media channel there. And um, yeah, so it, it, I could help guide you through it if you just, if you guys decide to go. Like, it's not impossible. I think that we will go one year, but right now, like, we, we're focusing on like three or four shows that we're going to do this year, which NRA will be one of them because we get to hang out with everybody. Uh, and you get, to, you get to actually see people that like to watch your, shit, which is really cool. Uh, so we get to go to NRA. We're going to do the Iraq Veteran 88 shoot. We're going to do try to do the Big Daddy this year, Big Daddy Unlimited shoot. And uh, what's the other one? we got another one that we're going to. I can't remember what it is. Oh, we're going to try to go to Knob Creek. Basically, all the things that we're going to are all shooting things. <laughs> yeah. But it's the stuff that's less expensive, honestly, because we we, just, we can't afford to go out to Vegas and stay out there for a whole Dude, whole I got to say, there's nothing cheaper than staying in Las Vegas. It's the cheapest show that we do every year. What? My my ticket to Las Vegas was forty eight dollars round trip. 
Yeah. It, it's the cheapest thing we yeah. do every year. What about where you're staying? Uh, I think I paid $787. Really? That's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're going to pay at NRA. It's going to be expensive because it's in Nashville. Oh, yeah. I think uh, 1300 is what I paid last time for Nashville. Anyway, I'm sure this is all super interesting. Uh, we already talked about a lot of holsters, so I just want to remind you, go to blackrhinoconcealment.com and use coupon code WLSMOFO to get the ACS and the CCS that Aaron was carrying. Uh, they also have the Heron, which basically has the mag pouch on the side of it. And uh, yeah, blackrhinoconcealment.com. Go check them out. Can't wait to see Gino at SHOT Show. I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, uh, Gino's going to be there? Yeah. Oh, Yep. Yeah. Uh, afraid, no. G- it'll be Gino's first SHOT Show, I think. Really? Oh, uh, Gary B said he almost bought an original Colt Python 357, but real quick, like the the new Pythons, they're getting and just trashed. They're they all suck. Really? That's what, that's what I hear. Yeah, just like uh, failure to cycle. Yeah, the failure to, like the cylinders not turning. They're hitting the same primer more than once. Like what the hell? And and, and, and it's like light primer strikes. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I saw this come out, but I didn't. I haven't heard anything else about them. Yeah, they. I I've seen three videos now, including Hickok forty five, uh, or at least social media posts. I don't know. Maybe it was their private page. I don't know. I'm sorry, uh, but <laughs> garbage. You need to do a worst of Shot Show and find the weirdest stuff. That's a good idea, Philip Z. Uh, I also I'm going to spend an entire day doing preacher medical. Phil. That's preacher Phil. Yeah, preacher Phil. All Our right. More compass. We're f- what? I said, if he's our moral compass, we're f- <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, oh, okay. What, are you like preacher? Like the, the, the comic book? A bit. Basically. All right. So now it's time to talk about some gear chat. And before we do that, I, I look, I was like, hey, you know what? Facts and firearms. Our listeners are not getting a big enough discount on full firearms because it was 3%. And I was like, it's unacceptable, and I will not allow this anymore. And they said, whoa, 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 where's all this aggression coming from, Sean? And I was like, I'm mad as hell, and our listeners aren't going to take it anymore. And they were like, okay, well, what if we just gave you 10% off of all the firearms? And I was like, yes, I, that is what we want. So now <laughs> we want to – We're WLS 10 gets you 10% off the entire firearms. And I actually just – Jeremy – You'd be so proud of me. I just sold my first fax and rifle as a dealer. Yeah. 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 I sold the ascent with the uh, 16 inch barrel and uh, dude, he was super stoked actually. And under a thousand bucks is uh, what I sold it for. And this is a full for a AR- rifle. It's actually a decent barrel. Yeah. Yeah. And they've, if you want something even less expensive, they've got their, uh, their uh, first line, which is going to be that, but also, I'm pretty sure that if you went and checked the Patriot and Hellfire FX19 pistols that you would see lower prices and then 10% off that as well by using coupon code WLS10 at faxandfirearms.com. This is where we talk about the gear. Now, Josh, I want you to think about a gunner gear that, that you're excited about while Aaron talks about his Jericho. Yeah. So I, I've talked about this in the past of how much I really wanted a Jericho um, just because I love the way it looked. So I finally got one uh, thanks to Brownells. Uh, I did not pay for this. They, they did send this to me. Um, this is the Jericho 941. It looks by IWI. It looks like the Magnum Research Baby Deagle. Surprise, surprise. Uh, basically the same family. So what it is is a um, uh, we got a hammer fired pistol. Uh, so with the trigger pull, I, all right, let me talk about the things I liked. Um, I like the gun. It looks nice. And that's about the extent of it. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it looks nice. I love the way it looks. These lines are sexy in here. Jeremy, what do you think? I think it's a CZ clone uh, made by people that only saw it once. And the only cool part about it is that Spike Spiegel carried one in uh, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Okay, so I, so Jeremy likes it. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not what I heard at all. Uh, so here we go. Um, the trigger pull from the the uh, 
condition one, condition two, excuse me, whatever, with the hammer back. Do you know what condition one, condition two means? You know what? I don't even want to have this conversation with you, Jeremy, because you always sound so condescending, <laughs> even when you're being nice. So anyhow, uh, with the hammer was back. not being nice. Uh, five pound pressure right here. Uh, pull the trigger. So from single the, from action is five five pounds. Double action is is I think off the charts. I couldn't measure it because I'd pull it and it would just <clears throat> max out the trigger pull uh, thing. This is a very heavy firearm. Uh, it's not polymer anything. Steel everything. It is very very heavy. Um, for racking the slide. It's not a lot of purchase space. As you can see, it's just this little area here. There's no front spot to grab onto. It's just way back here. And which is if you go up higher, like some people like to grab high up there, you're going to hit the controls as you slide over, which sucks on the on the uh, safety, which is a thumb safety here. But if you just slingshotting is no problem. Just going over the top is pretty easy. But again, coming from this direction, not so much. Uh, the magazines fall clear really easily. Just push the button. They drop out real nicely. It, so I guess my biggest complaint would be the, um, the lack of purchase space for, for pulling, for wrecking the slide. Otherwise, everything else seems pretty nice. I have not shot it yet. I just got it in the other day, but I like it. I, I mean, I, I, it's the only thing I don't like about it. And the, uh, you know, the, the heavy, heavy trigger pull is not a big, not a big fan of that either. It's a gun that I'm not interested in at all. Like, Dude, uh, I've, I've shot them. They are awesome to shoot. Really? They are. Yeah, they are. Uh, Johnny uh, had one. Johnny B had one. And uh, when he came down to hang out with us, he brought the uh, Masada, and he brought that thing. And that was the sweetest shooting handgun I've, I've shot in a long time. All right. I mean, the weight itself will mitigate so much of the recoil. So, I mean, but at the same time, it's heavy. It's not so, so like we were talking about earlier with holsters, um, you know, you put a heavy, if you have no hips and no butt and you put on a, a, a holster, like where outside the waistband, your pants are falling off. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, it's almost like I need a shoulder holster for this thing <laughs> yeah. because of the, the weight. Yeah. So what's the price on those? Uh, right now they're like, uh, five and a, 500, 550, Five, 550. 575. Yeah. 575. I'm sorry, I got a different discount over at Brownells, but yeah, so they're not that, and they're on sale right now if you're interested. They have, uh, the one I linked to is the, um, <coughs> is the 94F, which is basically the same thing. All yeah. right. Interesting. Yeah. That is not a thing that I would expect people to be interested in. Um, this is the Smith and Wesson MP9 Shield Easy. We- There's a tag on there. Yeah, I just got it in today. We actually talked about the uh, 380 easy quite a, quite a few times, just about how easy it is to cycle the slide back, and you know they've got the the grip safety. Uh, this one has no manual safety. They also sell a manual safety version. Uh, I reached out to Smith and Wesson. They sent this one in for review, and I gotta say I kind of like it. It's it's not small necessarily like if my sig p365 is up against it like clearly there's a pretty big size difference but this is for a nine millimeter uh it's going to carry uh eight plus one uh, rounds it's got the little tabs on the magazine to make it easy this is a gun not necessarily for just like every able-bodied person but uh for people with hand strength issues carpal tunnel just like any kind of stuff like that i will say and jeremy was yelling at me earlier when I was just trying to quantify my thoughts on it, clearly the 380 slide is much easier to cycle because the recoil spring has to be, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be as strong for nine millimeter. It's a little bit harder to cycle, but it's still easier than my Glock 19 or my P365 or my MMP 2.0 compact. Like it's, it, it is easier. It's not near as easy as the 380 easy. So I'm a little bit curious. i curious. I want to see exactly. Thank you, Aaron. I want to see exactly what the what the weight is. Now, obviously, there's it's got good purchase. It's got the M two point oh from Smith and Wesson series, the scalloped uh, texture at the back, which is not too bad. I love the three eighty easy, and I'm very curious about the three eighty easy nine. Or I'm sorry, the M M P easy nine nine easy easy e. 
whatever it happens to be. Uh, <laughs> these are going to run about 450 bucks retail uh, at Brownells, but you can get free shipping and all kinds of stuff there. So very Here's curious. my question yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay, so this was one of the, one of the firearms I was going to mention. Uh, but you know how everybody says that like 40 is going to beat itself to death basically over, over a period of time. Yeah. Do you think that it's possible with that stuff being lighter and everything being easier to move around and stuff like that? Do you think that eventually that nine could beat that thing to death? No, because of how it's designed. You're thinking it's designed like a traditional striker fire and it's not, it's actually not striker fire. It's internal hammer hammer fire. fire. It's internal yeah. hammer fire. So the way that they do that and however they cam it in the engineering is what actually yeah. makes it easier to rack, not just a really light recoil spring. And okay. the whole 40 thing that's going to beat the shit out of it, that only happened in like the 1980s because they, when they developed the 40, they developed four and nine millimeter frame, like Gen 1 Glocks. Well, they never planned on putting this pressured – 40 caliber pressure round in that frame. So yeah, if you get like a Gen 1 Glock, a 40 eventually will beat the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. But modern frames are designed for 40 caliber, so like that's a holdover. It's like don't dry fire your guns and and like that. It's just a holdover from when 40 was brand new and they just stuck them in 9mm frames because that's what it was designed for but the 20% extra recoil broke them. Yeah, the uh, the three eighty easy. It's super soft shooting, and actually the magazine it feels quite a bit less stiff to, to press down these little tabs. It's like a twenty two magazine, or you can press little tabs down and then just drop the rounds in. The nine millimeter, even the magazine feels sturdier and less easy to uh, to get in. Uh, teaching concealed carry classes and things like that, you will see a lot of people with hand strength issues, and that was why the three eighty easy was so interesting to me. But this is just uh, this is the the different version of that. It's a marketing checklist. Uh, Fire Toad Forge says, "Why do they put out, or why do they put the grip safety on those? Seems like extra. Just make it a normal M and P, but easy." There, this is a marketing checklist. What you are seeing here right now is a gun that was generated by going through marketing checklists. People want that safety. Uh, people want easy to rack slide. People want easy to rack, easy to load magazines. They want loaded chamber indicators on the top. This is not a thing that exists because it's the best possible option. This is a thing that exists because other guns with these features became popular. And that's what we, that's what we kind of can't, or what I want to say that grip safety has something to do with the actual cocking of the, the hammer. It does. I don't want to go back. It would make sense actually, because this does not have a trigger safety like the, the standard stuff. I don't know. It's um, I like the gun. I like it pre the hammer or something. Say that again. Like I want to say, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but the, what it feels like is when you depress that thing, like it feels like there's a mechanical give to it that it's like pre-prepping the hammer, which makes the slide easier to cock, i.e. making it easier to rack. So do this, Sean. Pull the trigger, but don't hit the, the safety. Hold the trigger down. All right. All right. And then press the safety while holding the trigger down. Can you feel like a uh, mechanical movement? No, it won't work that way because you'll jam the system up. Okay. No. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah, anyway, uh, I was really excited about the 380. This is not the same usability that I was assuming the uh, 380 Easy was, but I, I don't know. It still has a great size. I wouldn't carry the 380, but this is something I might carry actually. And I mean, it is bigger than my P365, but that is the first thing that everybody asked for whenever the 380 came out. Oh, why don't they make this a nine? Yeah, but so, then, and then you're like, oh, cool, eight plus one, or you know, my 365, yeah. which is twelve plus one. I don't know, yeah. man. It, it's tough. Like I love, I love the way it feels. I am an MMP guy, and it's like a single stack MMP 2.0 compact almost. So I'm kind of down with it, but yeah, it is, uh, it is a little bit more difficult to operate. Now, Josh, you've been thinking about the gear you want to talk about. What is it? Yeah. Okay. So I got two. Perfect. Um, I think this one has been out for a while, <clears throat> but it's not to me yet. Like I haven't got this yet. Uh, basically 
uh, Alpha Foxtrot. You know, you know who they are? I think I've heard the name. Okay, I saw them at the Eric Banner shoot this year. They basically make a, I don't know if it's aluminum or if it's like a titanium or whatever, but it's basically a, a metal framed Glock for like Glock 19 and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Uh, I look forward to getting those. And uh, it's really cool. It looks cool. I think it, and it looks custom already. Like it's already got like uh, undercuts and everything on it. So it actually looks really neat. Uh, so that's one of them that I would actually like to get a hold of. The other thing is this S15 magazine from Shield Arms. Oh, uh, yeah. I love Shield Arms. So this basically allows your 43X and 48 to have a 15 round capacity. And uh, I think that that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, that's freaking amazing. I cannot wait till I can get some of those in to sell. Because I will sell 43X and 43, or 48s and 43Xs nonstop. Because if I got a 48, it's basically a 19 cut in half laterally and yeah. the same capacity. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now I have a that's viable why... option for women with small hands that can't wrap their hand around a traditional double stack. It's money, man. I when I pre-ordered this thing, uh, my pre-order number was fifteen thousand one, and these were forty bucks a pop. Yep. So they, they. I mean, think about it. How much they actually got in this magazine? I mean, it, it's it's just it's in. I don't know what I don't know what the hell it's made out of. Steel. I Steel. Guess, yeah. Right. It, d- but, will uh, will it, a they, magnet stick to it? I got a Neo mag right here. Perfect. Oh, yeah. it will. So steel, it, not stainless, just steel. Well, because you got to remember how Glock mags are made. And that's super tight. So too. that has the same outer dimensions as a Glock magazine, but a bigger inner dimension because Glocks are always polymer ra- or steel wrapped or yeah, steel wrapped polymer or polymer wrapped steel. Steel, right? S- yeah, polymer wrapped steel. Yeah. So this thing right here, I've been playing around with this at the range and uh, we probably shot I'm going to say at least 200 rounds through it and it's not had any problems uh, it locks back every time never ha- hadn't had a problem out of it so what we were planning on doing is we did a, a bit of video basically uh, telling people what it was and our next video is going to be doing a thousand round count uh, review on it and just putting a thousand rounds through it in one day nice the uh, shield arms extensions for my shield actually uh, are amazing and I know a lot of people have been really excited about these. They did the shield long slide, I think, for a while, right? Shield yep. arms, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I I do like that company. They're they're actually doing pretty cool stuff. So they are, man. I think they're really cool. Uh, and the thing is, this this I'm not like, oh, you should go check them out because they told us to say that. Like, I tried to get one of these things for free, and they were not having it. So I bought this with my own money, and uh, I'm, I just think it's a cool product. But it just makes you wonder, like, Glock. Like, come on, Glock. Like, I know exactly. you're like, well, it's a Glock, but it's, like, it's our thing. It's like the polymer on the on the steel. But, like, come on, just call it the, like, just call it the Mag X or the Mag S or something. And just come up, just do it. Like, who yeah. didn't think of that? They should be f***ing fired. Take out behind the building and shot. Yeah, I agree. Seems like do, they are doing what Glock should have done when they invented this 43X. Yeah. This is what this should have been. Right. I, I agree. I mean, sick. Uh, they, they came with 10 and 12 uh, from, from the launch, and then they added 15s later. Yeah. Yeah. Glock should have done it. And they didn't, and they yeah. suck. Yeah, they didn't, and now – Shield Arms is going to be making forty bucks a pop at these things, and like I said, mine was fifteen thousand one. They went above that. Who knows how much they actually sold? Good for them. Yeah, Jeremy, you got a new toy. I did get a new toy. What'd you get? I got a full auto open bolt ten twenty two. Ooh, I got yeah. Uh, go to my Instagram. You can see a video of me shooting it. Um, oh. BX twenty five mag. Uh, yeah, it dumps 25 rounds in less than a second. It's real fast. Somebody is one of the comments was like, it looks like somebody just threw a handful of brass. <laughs> it, it does. I, I just put it on my full auto board of what I need. <laughs> Open bolt 1022 at the bottom there. 
Uh, so tell us how this came to be. Um, I thought it would be cool to have, so I do, mach- I have my range and I do machine gun rifles at the range. And we, thus far, we have an M16, an AKM, a Glock 17 converted full auto, and a New Frontier C5, which is very MP5-ish. Uh, not an MP5, but same barrel length, same size, same style, but the difference being, and it takes MP5 mags, but it has an AR fire control group. Um, but that like fits that like nine mil sub gun. And I was like, it'd be really, and we charge per magazine and, you know, ammo costs dictate how much it costs for people to run these things. Also, I'm making money. So I was like, it'd be really cool if we had like an, a full auto 22 for people <laughs> that might not have the money, but still want to shoot a full auto. Yeah. Um, so we're like, it's our, it's our economy, uh, machine gun rental. So um, I I forget who I was talking to, and it might have been you, actually. I don't remember. Um, oh, no, I didn't remember what it was. So somebody ordered uh, – somebody wanted me to order a suppressor for them from Atlas Defense. So I got a hold of Joe Mo and got to talking to him about it. And I said, Hey, send me over your price list and your, and your catalog and yada, yada, yada. And on the bottom of the price list was open bolt 1022 conversion for X amount of dollars, obviously for SOTs and stuff like that. And I was like, so Joe, let's, uh, let's do this. And he's like, you got a rifle? And I said, yes, I do. And he goes, all right. So we formed toed it and then he smithed it. And, uh, here I am. Nice. Uh, so explain what open bolt means. Open bolt means that, and most machine guns in the military, it's actually illegal to have a, a gun that fires for an open bolt. Uh, uh, <laughs> as a civilian, I'm pretty sure there might be some exemptions, but like, there's a reason nobody makes open bolt anything. Um, even though a lot of guns would work well with an open bolt, uh, an AR-15 could theoretically work well with an open bolt. They just weren't designed that way when they ran full auto. Um, I just lost it. <laughs> what are you watching? Just watching <laughs> What's that noise? I, I just, I just watched it. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what the f- is going on? Um, we're under attack. Um, yeah. Help! <laughs> help me! Help me! Um, so, uh, uh, I forgot what the f- I was talking about. Oh, no, I don't remember where I was. Just pick up somewhere. Work though. What do you mean? What's it? Oh, well, what is open bolt? What do you mean? How does that work? Like. Okay. All right, so the, the the general basis is the firing pin is constantly sticking out of the bolt, all right? Right. All right, so the firing pin sticking out of the bolt. It's basically welted there. And then when you pull the trigger, it actually drops the hammer or drops the bolt from an open position. So the bolt's locked to the rear. Like when you put the magazine in, you pull the bolt back, and it stays to the rear. When you pull the trigger, the bolt goes forward, picks a round up, puts it into the chamber, and immediately fires it as soon as it locks up. <clears throat> I've shot a, a Mac, Mac 11 or Mac in or whatever the other one was. I mean, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, I Josh believe, nine. Uh, Full Auto Thompson's fire from an open bolt, if I remember. Well, uh, this was a pre-86 uh, Mac 11, I think. Yeah, those fire, yeah. The, those would fire from the open bolt, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Four nine, thing is- threes, um, a lot of guns. What about Stens? Are they open bolt? Yes. Is there an issue with outer battery happening with that kind of system? Uh, no, because it won't fire it till the round stops on the head spacing. Okay. It, yeah. it, there's not enough oomph to like fire it when it picks it up. Um. Hmm. So it it uh, um. Then I'm trying to think where the bolt is on a 1022. If it's on the bottom or the top, I don't remember. But there's not enough. You know, basically, when the round chambers. Hits it hits its head spacing, seats properly, and that bolt comes home. It cracks it off. Bolt goes flying to the rear, starts all over again. As long as and basically letting go of the trigger catches the bolt to the rear. No. So instead of 
pulling the trigger and having a firing pin fly through the bolt to detonate the round, the bolt, the firing pin is basically part of the bolt and the trigger holds the bolt to the rear. It, it's pretty it's amazing. Forties, They all run that way. What does that cost to uh, rent at River's Edge Tactical? Ten bucks a mag. Ten bucks? Ten bucks a mag. Oh, I've, already, I've already made about 200 bucks on it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Pretty exciting. I mean, not, not counting like what ammo costs me, but I think right now we're using like a box of Remington gold bullet. Or you, you need to uh, turn that barrel and put a suppressor on it. So actually Joe Mo said he's got a barrel for me. Um, so we, we think we're going to, um, does anybody know if the Bowers uh, 22 can is full auto rated? The USST, I believe, is the one that's basically like the longer bitty. Yeah, yeah, that's the USS twenty-two. Is that what? It is? Double check with Tom, but it, it is the USS, which I believe well, is. Whatever, if, uh, if if I get a threaded barrel on that thing, a little shorty threaded barrel, uh, yeah, I'll I'll definitely uh, suppress that <laughs> <laughs> at least a couple of times. Oh uh, god, that's so awesome! I love it. Uh, let's let's talk about Brownells. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, Josh, wearing that Brownells hat. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Aaron. No, you didn't. Hey, Sean. Did you know that we're hosting the Brownells party in, at Shaw Show? Please. Yeah. Yeah, Did I do you that. Know the Brownells regrets that. Mm, I, 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 I don't think they do, actually. Uh, but if you're going to Shaw Show January, January 21st, 2020 at 730 p.m. at the Rumbar patio attached to the Mirage, uh, we, are, we are presenting... The Brownells Vegas meetup. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be lots of content creators there, uh, such as Rachel, uh, Hank Strange, and Lola, Real Dirty Harry, our buddy Chris, uh, Primer Projects, Holtworks, Cody Montgomery, and more. All kinds of stuff going to be going on there. And I will tell you about a story about the the most recent thing that I ordered from Brownells. It is the Arasaka Defense Flush M Lock Mount for a uh, Streamlight. Nice. Yeah. Uh, That's cool. Not not too expensive. I actually had my stream light and I was trying to put it on my rifle and I was like, uh, I, what mount do I need? And I have an ah. M-Lock rail, but I have a Picatinny uh, mount on the on the light. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to add that extra bulk. So yeah, the Arasaka Defense, it's out there. It's available. And I also ordered for a 1022. Uh, we lost the little detent that goes into the safety. And I was able to get that from Brownells too. So not just mounts for flashlights, but also like the tiniest little part. I think it cost me like a dollar seventy four, and uh, made it super easy. And you can get anything at Brownells. They have coupon codes every single day on their website. But if you'd like to give us credit for the sale, you can go to weliketrading dot com slash sponsors and just click on the Brownells link in that table, and it will take you right there. Aaron, what's your topic tonight? Uh, it was a topic that Jeremy and I kind of started on in the our, our Slack group. Um, talking about our military, and last week I, I I made the disparaging comment that our military was uh, welfare, basically, and it's not. I and I apologize for that. But what I did say afterwards uh, to Jeremy and I in a private conversation is we should privatize our military. It would be so much cheaper and alleviate so much money from our budget. It'd be crazy because then you wouldn't have to pay medical costs. You wouldn't have to pay uh, infrastructure costs. You would. It would just be built in in a different way. In a different way, right? But it wouldn't be like like long term, like retirement. Uh, you wouldn't have to pay for that. They would have the companies would have to pay for that, and they uh, yes, they would charge you for that. But it would be because it's privatized. It would be at a competitive rate versus whatever the government has to pay. So I thought that'd be a great idea. I, I wonder what your guys' opinion would be on a privatized military. I know what Jeremy's is, but Jeremy, why don't you regale us? Um, I think it's a double-edged sword. I really do. Um, uh, I think a privatized military would be more effective and better. The bad part is 
is at that point they're basically mercenaries and who's to say if they're going to fight for the highest bidder. Um, if somebody can economically just outpay you, they can take your entire military from you. Um, now, that being said, there isn't a country on the world that could outpay a military um, than the United States. I mean, even China, who has – who is 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 – making a lot of money this day and age, their GDP is something like one eighth of ours or a 13th of ours. Their GDP is nowhere near the size of ours. Um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Josh, what do you think about privatizing the military? I don't really know how to answer that question. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> because I don't really understand it. Well, it would be basically outsourcing the military. So we outsource a lot of the stuff right now. We outsource the, uh, you know, the cooks for our meals. A lot of times we outsource uh, security on bases. We, we outs- there's, there's a big difference between outsourcing silly stuff like, and I wouldn't say silly stuff, but like there's a big difference between outsourcing carpentry. Right. You know, building a hooch, outsourcing that to a civilian contractor versus outsourcing the guy who drives the f-ing tank or flies the B-52 bomber. So, yes, there are. But usually, at least in the Marine Corps, the the cooks in the chow halls, it's ran by a Marine. There may be civilian staff there, but there is a Marine in charge of that chow hall, at least when I was in. So let me ask this. Like, Is, is Aaron frozen? Uh, yes. he, he did. Let me ask this. We, we've we seen privatization of military forces. Like, and I mean, let's talk about Blackwater. Like, we, I mean, go ahead. 200 years, two, two, 300 years ago, privatized military was the rule, not the exception. Being, I mean, go back all the way to the Romans, uh, the, the mercenaries back in the times of Rome, it was seen as a a, a, a um, honorable profession. Like it was, it was not seen as like this stain on 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 uh, humanity. Uh, being a professional soldier willing to fight for pay was seen as an honorable thing. Even back in the Revolutionary War, the Brits hired the Hessians, which were some of the best fighters in the world but also and the most brutal fighters in the world not necessarily well brutal because that effect but effective brutal um, but effective well, yes. br- brutal because of their effectiveness yes yeah, so- but i mean but when you have when you have an 18 year old private who's never been away from home and this is the first time he's ever seen combat and if you put that guy up against a 30 year old who's been in combat his entire adult life and likes it you have a huge power vacuum there. There, there is something to be said about private, about guys that like to fight and want to be there, versus a guy who signed up to do his duty, serve his country, but doesn't really want to kill anybody. I mean, if even if you go back to like the percentage of people that actually fire at the enemy and and in, intentionally missed like civil war revolutionary war era um you were your duty was to fire your rifle not actually hit somebody um and they would purposely aim high and and so that they could say that they took did their part um and believe it or not PTSD comes a lot more from knowing that you murdered somebody than seeing death death we see death all the time we don't take life all the time so most people can't deal with that um even though you know the military gets you amped up kill 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 blood 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 and then you actually do it and then most people well not most people but there's a percentage of people where that with them um their entire life the rest of their life and then you got other people that really like it and if that guy wants to fight for the rest of his life and get paid for it as a profession, that guy is not the guy you want to meet on the battlefield. I agree I mean, with that. Same thing as like CIA contractors and stuff like that, right? I mean, right. 
Yeah, it, yeah special forces guys aren't deadly, aren't as deadly as they are because, uh, I mean, yes, they get a lot of training and a lot of cool toys and yada, yada, yada. They want to be there and they like to be there. And they have no problem ending you, and they've done it before, and they've been shot at before, and they can keep their head cool. They don't get the tunnel vision. They don't lose their cool. They've been, they've done all this before. Versus the guy who's never been shot at, never been you know seen blood and guts and spit and ass and all that. Let, let me bring this up. Uh, spit and ass. That's weird. <laughs> but, all right. Uh, let me bring this up. Like so, we saw privatized military. We saw Blackwater. We saw contracting. We saw things like that. And what we also saw was kind of a lot of corruption. We saw excessive violence that were outside the rules of engagement and the rules After of war. Military, you just don't hear about it as much. It was good to be a scapegoat. Oh, and is that is that the key? That was that's literally the next question. That, that, that literally is why we we they did what they did. Something went wrong. So it went down, and we out and we could because they were private military. It, that happens all the time. All right, uh, Okinawa, Japan, Marine Corps has a base there, um, and Iwakuni is a smaller island, island, and there's also a base there. Um, there was been a standing rule where uh, Marines of a certain Grade and below are not allowed to drink because too many locals have gotten raped. Hmm. So no, our, our the guys in our military are just as likely, if not more likely, to do some that is going to. But but the government can control that a little bit more than if it's a PMC doing it. And and honestly, the whole Blackwater thing. Uh, a lot of that was the government throwing them under the bus because they could, because that's what they're there for. And go well, Blackwater, Blackwater, but you never heard about Triple Canopy, Constellus Group, uh, the, the the any one of the three dozen companies that were in Iraq and Afghanistan for the last twenty years. Well, Constellus is Blackwater. It was what Blackwater turned into. No, Constellus I- Group is it now. Constellus Group is Triple Canopy and a few other. Uh, like five or six other companies. Um, there's oh, a company yeah, out there called Thor Securities. Wow. I think they got bought. And a lot of these companies get bought and sold all the time. Yeah. So like Blackwater was Blackwater, then it was XE Corp, and then it was something else. And now it's Blackwater again or going to be Blackwater again. Like, I- So so uh, Adam B. says private military doesn't swear to the Constitution. They swear to the dollar. And that's absolutely true. But I mean. I'll fight for no country, but I'll fight for good pay. <laughs> uh fire to forge would they not follow the rules of war kind of people though honestly if you got something you got you gotta get done yeah well and that's, that's what they mean. get used for a lot of times they get you know that's where the cia contractors and that kind of get come in where it's like all right we need this mission to happen but like we we can't be involved in we it. need plausible deniability you know we need you guys just need to get this done but like we didn't know about it like like you just kind of take, you know, that's where a lot of that, you know, and we can use private militaries for that. Now, private militaries don't have the infrastructure. Um, we would never give them the infrastructure, allow them to have the infrastructure that the U.S. military has. Um, as far as I know, there isn't a PMC in the world that has a that has one aircraft carrier, or let alone 13 of them, um, or nuclear submarines, or, you know, B-52 bombers in mass and F-35s. And well, what if we privatized just the, the, the ground troops and left the, you know, the, the, sea, the naval and the aerial to, uh, to the U.S.? I, I mean, it's a, it's a discussion that you can have. It's a nice thought. It's a nice, uh, 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 what's it called? A thought, uh, like it's a, a thought the, game. The Exercise. Them, well, no, tax, it's, it's the federal government pays, but it's, it's still funded through taxes, but we would no longer have the budget but here's the thing pmcs it costs a lot more money than than what our, our troops make i mean the standard private is making you know 900 bucks a thousand bucks a month or something like that and Whoa. and and these guys were making at the height of iraq those guys were making anywhere from between 150 to fifteen thousand dollars a day base pay no taxes and had the chance for bonuses if a really dangerous mission came up. Holy So I don't know, man. I, I think maybe volunteer army is the way to go enhanced by private military contractors, which is kind of exactly the system we have right now, right? Like, cause we have people fighting for our country, swearing to the constitution, doing all those different things. And then we have private military contractors that are doing some of the work that other, that, that they don't want our 
volunteer well, military. Most of what most of what PMCs did was not in direct confrontation. It was uh you're gonna secure this convoy. Exactly. Yeah. So just some of that stuff where it's not like you're doing I think whatever's in the microwave is done, guys. It's done. You're not doing active operations. <laughs> you're doing guarding and security and things like that, which which totally does make a lot of sense. But, I mean, like, could – what is happening right now? Sorry. Not long <laughs> oh, okay. Crazy. So, I, like, does – would – who would fight harder in a battle, right? Like, would a volunteer 18-year-old P, uh, private first class – uh, who gets ambushed and he's uh, jumping out and, and engaging the enemy or private military contractor who's on his 17th deployment and, you know, doing the thing that he does for the reasons that he does, like who's going to be more effective. Probably. Oh, definitely. The, yeah. Definitely the Merc. Yeah, definitely the, I was, the PMC. I was reading a book. Well, I wasn't reading the book. I was listening to a book on audio, whatever it's called. Uh, <clears throat> and the book was basically saying that, you know, when he, got out of the military he he didn't really know what else to do so that's why he went to go to the cia contract and stuff and uh i mean i think it's a lot of those book? guys yeah no that's a lot of those guys really don't know what else to do i mean how, how are they supposed to come in and settle into you know real life basically when they're used to doing this forever wait did you just push thank me for my service on the show i didn't I said I would listen to a book. <laughs> no, I've funny. actually heard it was a really good, really well written book. It is a really good book, I and bet. he actually did the, all the, uh, the voice. Know, all the voice and stuff. He read the book basically. That it's actually on my list of stuff to buy on Amazon. So yeah, I mean, on audio, whatever it is, it's, it's really good. Audible. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Like I think that for some things, yes. For other things, no. Like we we have seen private military contractors get into trouble. And like Jeremy said, are they just being held as the scapegoats? Like there's a, a good chance of that, but I don't know. I don't know what's better. I feel like private military contractors would be 10 times as expensive to do operations like the, the normal <clears throat> military does than our normal mil- military system, which is already paying, you know, like what, $700 for a toilet seat, things like that. So it's rife for corruption. Our, our, let's, 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 let's stop some right now. Our military budget is not that big. No. All things compared considered. to total budget, it's only like what, twelve or sixteen percent of our total budget. The entire DOD. And 12, also twelve or sixteen percent. It's well, not that big. Well, Jeremy, what if we weren't playing world police everywhere? Like what would that budget be? Probably a lot less. Nah, I it'd probably be more for the sheer fact that there'd be a lot more Tom around the world that we'd have to go deal with after the fact because one of our European allies would be like but we just can't deal with it hey, please America please come help that's exactly what happened in Serbia, Croatia Bosnia in the f***ing 90s with that whole dust up America went that is a European problem and you need to figure it out and they went but we can't and America came in stomped their f***ing foot down and said you f- knocked the f- off and it stopped. Plus, plus we, get to, quickly. we get to test out all our new weapon systems. So, yeah, true. <laughs> so, I mean, there, there, there's some bonuses. Um, there's some bonuses to play, playing world police. Somebody else isn't doing it. China, Russia, though they don't have the budget to really do it. Um, nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else has the GDP and the military might to actually do it. And it does, at some level, need almost a trillion dollars is not that much. Uh, yeah. 65% of our 65% of our total budget is social programs. So, well, let's take the social programs and just put them all in the military. And just set, well, I mean like not like make the military a social program, but just take all those people who are on social programs, put them in the military and then we've given them all jobs. So now they're working for that money. I mean, you change that TR to an M and you're pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good stuff. Good discussion. Uh, let's move into some news. This is Going Ballistic, brought to you by Second Call Defense. If you have a firearm, use a firearm, or just want to uh, make sure that you're protected. Just make sure you're protected in case you ever have to use anything. Check out Second Call Defense, and that's welikeshooting.com slash SCD. Get a free month and a free T-shirt just for signing up. 
and literally it's like less than your car insurance. It's less than this bottle of rum that I got from my secret Krampus, uh, in the cold group. Uh, it's less than this every single month and it protects you and make sure that you don't spend more time than necessary in jail. Make sure you don't have to sell your house to pay damages, uh, to the family of the person who decided that you did a wrong thing. Even though you won the criminal case, civil is a big deal. And that's what second call defense helps with all of the above. Uh, but let's, I want to talk about Virginia. I talked about it on this week in guns, but I kind of want to talk about it here. So first off, uh, governor Northam has plans to use emergency powers to ban weapons ahead of next week's rally. So we have lobby day coming up in Virginia and he has now, it's a state of emergency. Literally. Uh, he has said they have credible threats and now he has banned it from Friday to Tuesday, I believe of this upcoming week. Um, the NRA has showed up and targeted Virginia and teamed up with Magpul to hand out 30 round magazines at the, uh, one of the, uh, one of the days that wasn't lobby day, but it was another, uh, government in service day. Virginia has also banned guns from the state capitals. So people previously were allowed, if they had a concealed carry permit, they were allowed to carry inside state government buildings and things like that, including legislators, citizens, and even law enforcement. They have now banned that. So like here in Colorado, I can carry my gun concealed in the DMV. It just says no external display of firearms and which is kind of a great thing. So they have now banned that, including some of the legislators who made waves for open carrying 38s and things like that. Uh, they have targeted magazines saying anything over 10 rounds is going to be illegal. They have targeted suppressors to make anybody in possession of a suppressor after a six month, uh, grandfather clause, uh, to be a felon. And I'm like, well, if they wanted to transfer that to somebody out of state, it takes more than six months. It takes eight to 12 months or eight to 14 months for them to transfer that. Uh, they have now talked about putting conceal uh, CCW reciprocity in jeopardy by saying that instead of just anybody who has a concealed carry permit in another state, they would look at the training requirements in each state. For for example, Colorado doesn't really have a training requirement. We're required to have training by an accepted curriculum, but it doesn't have range time. It doesn't have any specifications. And honestly, we may lose any kind of that reciprocity or any states that don't have uh, crazy stuff. And in fact, it gives them the ability to say, Oh, no, we don't agree with their training standards, so we're not going to offer reciprocity. Uh, lots of disinformation going on. They pulled back their AR-15 confiscation, but Virginia's a f-ing powder keg, and it is absolutely insane. Uh, Josh, Virginia, what the f- man? Man, that's a state that's close to us, and, uh, you know, for a long time, uh, I would say since last year sometime, like either I think it was spring or summer, um, there has been like 10 counties here in my area, my, my county being one of them, that actually started doing the, uh, you know, the Second Amendment Sanctuary City thing. And, uh, you know, we were a part of that. We, we went and voted and went down to the you know, town hall and all that stuff. <clears throat> so I, at the time, I was thinking, like, I don't know. I can't remember if somebody was trying to push something through. I don't think they were. I think they were doing it out of if somebody did try to push something through, though, it would be a second of a sanctuary city. Um, but when all this stuff started going on in Virginia, I, I have family that lives in Kentucky. And, you know, it's, we barely pass through Virginia, but we do pass through there. It's like through like a two or three county spread. Uh, and so my thought on that is if I'm if I'm driving through Virginia to go back to, you know, Kentucky, which, by the way, there's a lot of stuff going on in other states too. There's, st- you know, Virginia is a big one, but there's stuff going on in Kentucky. There's stuff going on in Georgia. It's going on all over the place. Uh, they're trying to push a bunch of shit through. But so driving through Virginia, am I going to be still okay if I was to get pulled over by the, you know, state trooper or anything like that? Because they like to pull people over in like Wise County and stuff like that. They love to pull people over and give tickets there. So. Am I still going to be okay with the reciprocity and stuff like that with my concealed carry license is what I want to know and stuff like that. Cause I mean, obviously I don't live in Virginia, but that's what I want to know. Yeah. It, it's kind of nuts, man. Like th- there's all kinds of stuff like inter- interstate, interstate travel, uh, everything else that's going on there. It, it is a powder keg, I think. And the fact that they pulled back the, uh, the AR 15 confiscation off the table, like, I don't think that means anything. They're trying to make everything. Uh, so 
the the governor was in already. Then they basically the whole state went blue. Over 130 plus counties have become sanctuary counties, which will probably end up going to the Supreme Court. Laura Ingram on Fox News said that she thinks that uh, that will go to the Supreme Court because uh, and, and the whole thing behind that is basically that Heller 2008 said that uh, the Second Amendment is an individual right. And yeah, it, the like the whole thing. So we have. Um, we have these sanctuary counties who say that county uh, resources, county employees can't do anything to infringe on the Second Amendment. But then we have uh, we have the the state that says that local localities, municipalities, and counties can't do things that uh, that don't follow the state's guidelines. This is going to end up in courts, but it doesn't matter. Like once you lose those rights, Colorado, July first, two thousand thirteen. We lost the right to anything over a 15 round magazine and we fought. We, we recalled two of the senators. We, uh, John Morris, Angela Garone, we, the speaker of the house and also, uh, another one of his cronies recalled them. It doesn't matter. Like we lost those rights. It is 2020 now that is, uh, seven years later and what, nothing what has changed. Gonna do is going to fight a lot of fire under people's ass and basically because they, allowed you know a democratic you know ruling in there basically or allowed somebody to come in that's you know uh, blue or left or whatever you want to call it uh they're going to go up and they're going to vote now and they're going to try to turn it back red Uh, but my question is how long does he have before he's able to push that guy out yeah and i i think they have they have term like limit, term? term limits on the governor, which I think is one of the reasons he's pushing this stuff so hard because I don't think he can run again in the next election. So he knows he's gone. So he knows that, hey, let me, uh, you know. At least get one year, basically. Yeah, get one year under it. Or uh, Bloomberg said that he would fund my presidential run in 2026. So, or, or I'm sorry, 2024, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so I'm going to try to push all this stuff so that he will fund me and do these things. He doesn't care. Like he has nothing to lose. He has nothing to gain. He he just has this, the goodwill of the people who are infringing upon our second amendment rights when it comes up next time. So like, it doesn't matter. He he can't be elected again as I, as I understand, but yeah, the being two a sanctuaries doesn't have any force of law. Like yeah, it doesn't do anything. It's, 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 it's like, the, cause I, I just, I got a bunch of Facebook requests about it around here. And I'm like, yeah, you guys want to use my classroom for a meeting, like whatever, like I'll help you guys out. But like people are like, Oh, we need to do this. And this is like, duh, 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 duh. And I'm like, it doesn't do anything. It's not doing anything. Yeah. Well, so, I, I use thoughts and prayers all for, the time. It's, <laughs> it's showing people though, that, the majority of people in that state do not want, you know, what they're, what they're trying to push through though. No. And they don't care. They don't care. Well, yeah. I think they yeah, do sure. care, but they got complacent and they didn't show up at the polls because they were like, Oh, my vote doesn't matter. Yeah. And it, it's awful. Uh, yeah. So the lobby day is coming up uh, very soon. I believe that's next. When Tuesday. do they vote on all these things? Are they not, they're currently voting for them. Are they not? They're I in session right thing. now. Yeah, they're in session right yeah. now, or not right this second. The, the bad part is we don't have an electoral college for states. Like yeah. states don't have electoral colleges, and, and and that's the problem is you have more people living in two major cities than the rest of the state. So yeah, and we had this. Dis- I had this discussion the other day with somebody. If you live in the country, you're like, I don't want people in my life. I don't want people in my business. If you live in an inner city, you literally rely on the government to do services for you. Otherwise you can't survive in the country. We're like, I don't want this. I live out here for a reason. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone. I want to do my thing. All the, all the places that are actually bigger or whatnot is mostly like farmland and stuff like that. But it's not all the people are in the major cities like Norfolk and Richmond and all those places. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, what, it, it, I always go back to that breakdown of the uh, the, U, the the 2016 election by county, and there's like 5,000 counties in the U.S. counties and parishes, and like 39 of them were blue and the rest were red. But in those 39 countries or 39 counties, more people literally lived than in the rest of those 5,000 and some. 
Yeah. So they don't need to give a f- about all of us showing up at. They need to be scared of us, but they don't give a f- about us until you know it goes too far and we have to you know start hanging them in the street or something. Because that's where it's mm. that's that's where it's headed. Whether it's in our lifetime, my children's lifetime, my grandchildren's lifetime, or my great grandchildren's lifetime, it's headed that way. It will get there eventually because every great civilization falls. Too many, you know, and then you have to start over again. And we've been too far away from what the founders wanted in the Constitution. And it's just been this slow decay into big government and, and not freedom. And eventually we need to shoot those people in the face and uh, go back to uh, – What do you mean by those people? I mean politicians and bureaucrats <laughs> that want nothing but power. It's just power. I mean, I would, oh, you know, like the whole Bane, the whole Bane, uh, uh, Batman thing. Like, I don't want to do that to like rich people, but like politicians, I kind of want to do courts and like throw them out of a window. Well, you know, <laughs> so here's the thing is like our founders of this country, they, they put our system in place because voting could, could change things. Uh, but we have with voting so much in this country that it doesn't. And like that kind of thing will lead eventually to a downfall. I think <laughs> Aaron, I'm going to cut you so hard. <laughs> I'm going to cut you so good. You wish I not cut you so good. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's good stuff out there you can listen to, but. Do you- oh, I'm, I'm, fu- I'm fully okay with going back to, uh, you know, something along the lines of being a property owner to be able to vote. Um, do you think, I mean, uh, honestly, yeah, like taxpayers, property owners, things like that. Yeah, if you don't pay federal income tax, you don't get to vote. Like, I'm fully okay with that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Jewish shark. Did it, did it, did it. So what, what, <laughs> what if I owe tax money? Do I get to vote? No. What's that? What if I owe money to, to no. the IRS? <laughs> All Be right. gone. All right. There you go. Virginia's a powder keg. Will we see the boogalation? I don't know. It's getting kind of crazy. It's getting but scary, man. Actually, here's the thing I want to say most. He's declaring a state of emergency because of all this stuff. I think it's a fear ta- a fear mongering tactic. I think he's trying to scare uh, legal Second Amendment re- proponents uh, to to not show up at at the Capitol. Yeah. I think they're trying to be like, oh, everything's going to go crazy. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Like. If you're planning on going, don't let them scare you into not going. Fear is the mind killer. Uh, you need to show up. You need to be there, and you need to be part of that political process because these are individual rights, and I won't go on about that. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is the reviews brought to you. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what just happened. What just happened? What? Why, why did you make that sound? Who? <laughs> you. <laughs> I burped. That's what a burp sounds like. Uh, this is the re- reviews brought to you by Manticore Arms. ManticoreArms.com. Coupon code WLS10 saves you 10% off. I'm going to tell you this. Keep oh, an eye out for stuff coming from Manticore Arms uh, at SHOT Show. I want you to keep an eye out on the X Products booth. I want you to keep an eye out on the Franklin Armory booth. I want you to keep an eye out on the Brownells booth. If you do that, that'll be awesome. You can also, you're, very soon you'll be able to buy the CZ uh, Scorpion Evo Bullpup kit at manticorearms.com. And when you do, use coupon code WLS10 to save money. I promise you will like it. It's positively, posterig, positively all right, Jeremy, you've got the reviews. Take it away. Aaron, never f-ing do that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish that he wouldn't. <laughs> nice. Nice. By the Oregonian. Five stars. Just started listening a few days ago, and I must say that I love how you guys integrate humor and knowledge and most of the time some nonsense into conversations. I know you guys read reviews, so quick question. I just bought my first AR-15 Springfield Armory St. Victor 556, and I was just wondering what kind of optic I should put on it. I would like to use it for home defense and, of course, to have fun at the range. Awesome podcast. Can't wait to get to know you guys more. Aw, thank you, Oregonian. Uh, what do you guys think for an AR-15 is the best home defense optic? Is it a red dot? Trigicon RX-34. 
And what is that? Romeo five or uh, any, well, if you're going to go with an electronic red dot, get something that's auto on like a Romeo five, um, something that turns on when you grab it, you don't have to sit there and yeah. fumble with it in the dark. Right. Um, the, the Trigicon is a, uh, tritium dot or uh fiber optic. Yeah. So, so there's no batteries. It's a reflex site. It's a reflex site. Oh. Um, and uh, I have one on my home defense gun. That's the only reason I say that. Um, my suppressed short barrel. Yeah, auto. Oh. So auto on is hugely important. Uh, long battery life. Auto off, clearly important. Uh, Josh, what were you going to say? Those Romeo fives are on Brown Owls right now are pretty cheap. I'm yeah, I can't even that. compete with it, man. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, they're they're they are cheap on there right now. Yeah, they're like 125 bucks or something. Yeah, it's like I saw one for 119 the other day. Yeah, they're like sitting at my cot. Yeah, yeah, Romeo five. I, I actually really like mine, but yeah, Auto One, something like that. Um, Auto. The, okay, I will admit, uh, the site that I mentioned, the the, the Trigicon RX 34, is a 800 ish dollar optic. So you you do what you do want to do. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah. this is also something to consider is that not just that, but you need something that auto brightness adjusts because if you pick up your gun in the, like the dead of night, no lights on anywhere. And it's at seven, even though it's auto on, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, auto adjust is a huge thing that I think a lot of people neglect to think about. Jeremy, did well, you- it's like, it's like looking into this ring right here. Wait, I'm trying to get back. Don't, don't leave yet. Look at his glasses. Look at his glasses. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like exactly. The ring. <laughs> Dude, right. you know, I, I wanted to figure out which one I was looking at, which one I was thinking of, yeah. and I found it. It's the MTAC. This is the way I'd go. Because it's one to four, so you got a true one if you just want a straight up line, you know. But the problem one. with that in the dead of night with very little light in the house, the tube is going to be, uh, the tube is not going to have enough light for you to really make out a target very well. If you're that's, in a house, unless that's your the, house is That's huge. the problem with a tube in the dark. Yeah, right, but if, if your house is huge, I could see where that'd be a problem. But if you know your house, you just aim it. You just aim in a direction you need to shoot. Yeah, and, that's a good way to like kill the neighbor's cat. Okay, like the cat. But wait a second. Like LPVO, not great for home defense. I don't think. So you got a thirty millimeter tube, not letting in a ton of light. Uh, I love that what optic you that you're talking about. What is your go-to? What do you grab when it's, when it's a situation that you have to have it? What do you grab? Me? Yeah. I grab a pistol. We're talking, we're talking That's what I grab. I don't yeah. go for AR. I go for pistol. I go for a Glock 17. Why, but, the f- why the f- I grab a gun that is less powerful, holds less rounds, and harder to aim under stress? Well, I actually live in an apartment now, so I pe- over-penetration is a huge thing. I'm pistol with uh, a very high-expanding ammo. I was gonna say nine millimeter still gonna still gonna uh, penetrate deeper than a uh, appropriate five five six round. Yeah, mm. I just so, know because so, it's easy, it's easy I, to I, score. I have you, what you said Glock nineteen, right? Glock seventeen. So Glock seventeen. So you have seventeen rounds. I have thirty rounds or forty, depending on which magazine I grab. Um, so I got 40, 30 or forty rounds to get the fuck out of my house. Not seventeen. I have a five five six car. It up with Horn D A Max, which is going to do way more f-ing trauma than your f-ing nine millimeter. With not, I don't care what ammo you have in it. Sports got great. Okay, cool. And I still win. And I have a suppressed SPR. It's easier, to, easier to grab, easier, easier to store, uh, easier to faster to grab. I, I just, that's why I, yeah, that's why I put it up there. I guess. I it, know. It, listen, I, I, saying, I think both saying, options are good. I'm options. not saying it's a bad option. I'm saying there's better options. Yeah, yeah. If you so, come in, if you come in and you want something for home defense, I'm gonna try to sell you an AR pistol. And hey, what from, do you think I, about people doing home defense with the varmint rounds? You want me to raise my mic or lower my mic? You want me to put it in front of my mouth or put it up here? Keep it the f- away from your nose. Go <laughs> low. You're the one that bought me this f-ing headset. I ordered you another one. It should be there Friday. Sweet. Wait, well, say what you're going to stay in. What stay do you in. think about varmint rounds for home defense? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like That's an intruder is a varmint. Have... literally what they're made for. Varmints. Yeah. 
So and a varmint just came into my house. So uh, someone pointed this out earlier: is if someone's in your house, are you going to turn your lights on or leave them off? Leave them off. I know what my house looks like in the dark. Yeah. Don't you want to know what you're shooting at? I got a flashlight. A yeah. You, on will, will the flashlight help let the light in the tube of a, of the one by four MTAC? It would help, but you're going to be too late. You're not going to be able to be on target when you turn it on. I don't yeah, know. I, on the so, so here's the thing too, is Friday. like, and the reason why I would go with the MTAC is because after, you know, home defense, I can, and he's also said a range toy. You can take it to some distance a lot farther, or you can see a lot farther than you can with a red dot. Okay. You're trying to dual purpose it. We're talking well, about that's what, no, he, he had a dual home defense. He said, you know, it'd be, uh, let's see. I was wondering what kind can't of, take a, can't take an AR with a red dot out to the range. No, but I'm saying you can see farther with the, uh, the, uh, the MTAC than you can with the red dot is what I'm saying. And he says it's for the range and, you know, and, and home defense. Why not? You know, I think it would work for both. And of course, to have fun at the range. I don't need an LPVO to have fun at the range. I need it just makes some it more semblance fun. of sights to have fun at the range. All right. I, whatever you do, because you, you can hit a, you can hit a fly at a hundred yards on paper with, a, with, with the iron sights. <laughs> Probably true, actually. I don't I mean, know. I'll get real I, mean, I know you shot a, a flight once. I did hit a fly during a CCW <laughs> class. A lot of us can't. <laughs> it's got to be a horse fly, though. No, it was a house fly. This <laughs> house fly kept flying around and landing on the targets, and they're only like 15 feet away or something like that. It wasn't like a really far away shot. This fly kept landing, and I just drew my pistol and went, boom, nailed it. And everybody in the class mm-hmm. went, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> the picture that you posted afterwards was just like a, like some blood in a hole. Yeah, it was a bullet hole with like a wing and some blood around it. I'm just trying to figure out why the, the fly had blood in it. Flies have blood. Yeah, it was red blood. Yeah, have you ever smashed a fly in your arm? There's red blood. I have. I don't like it. Yeah. Doesn't make it not true. <laughs> just because you don't like it. So uh, I have this on my nightstand, and I have a short, I have an SBR with a suppressor in my safe. So I will use my pistol, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna put. Uh, I should put the 458 uh, SOCOM binary pistol in my safe. I have a pistol next to my bed, and my rifle in the closet, and the pistol is to get me to the rifle. Yeah, good plan. I, I get that, but I mean, I've honestly, heard it's really good to keep your ears next to your bed too, because I mean, it's just super smart. That's why I have a suppressed rifle. <laughs> well, I don't have one. But Flex on the I've always heard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I'll, I'll put it this way: my suppressed SBR has a seven and a half inch barrel in it. Even suppressed, it's not hearing safe. But like, I don't give. A f- I'll go a little bit deeper to to protect my family. Like, that's not a concern but, of mine. But if you got the ears, then you can turn it up. You can hear what's going on. But if you have electronic ears, yes. If you don't have electronic ears, I would not suggest that you wear them. All right. Uh, next review. Uh, your show scared my wife. Autocrossed. Five stars. I love the show, especially Jeremy's rants and his temper tantrums. I don't have temper tantrums. Go f*** yourself. Auto crossed. <laughs> Sounds like you just had a temper now tantrum. Now I'm cross. <laughs> this is me normal. All right, uh, that'll do it for that what, stuff. What time Jeremy's cross is dressing? Aaron, your mic suddenly changed. It, it's weird. Yeah, no. Uh, it, I'm having internet connections tonight. Issues uh, tonight. Okay. So anyway, yeah, uh, I said, uh, I said the only time Jeremy gets crossed is when he's dressing. No, I heard you. I just you're okay. Just your making sure your mic sounds. I, I I demand a sympathy chuckle or you know. <laughs> no, I will not. There it is. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, go to our giveaways. We like shooting dot com slash giveaways. We've got stuff from Kenos Tactical Group, Black Rhino Concealment, Stuck Customs, Blue Alpha Gear, Patriot Patch Company. Uh, if you are in our cult, you get extra entries. The Gun Cult dot com. You get access to our cult only Facebook page. We had fun today, man. It was the purge twenty twenty. Sean, Sean, and coming soon. And coming soon. What a new a new giveaway! Yes, coming soon. Yes, should we should we I announce it or, or it you want to hold off? If, I can't remember what the tattoo is. What is it? If you have the tattoo, uh, if you get a WLS tattoo, yeah, we mock you. 
Uh, Sean gives you a hand oh, over the pants. No. Over the pants. Uh, yeah. down. Nick, Nick gives you one. Uh, no, Nick and Sean. Uh, watch Sean watches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll watch. That's fine. Whatever. Nick, Nick gives you an over the pants hand with his hole. <laughs> Dude, that is not a thing I want. Uh, no, Aaron will announce it. That sounds uh, pretty good. <laughs> we'll announce it once we add it. We like shooting.com slash giveaway. Cult members get extra entries. You can enter every single day. We give away a ton of every single month. You can also go to lovewls.com that has uh, links to our, our partners, our sponsors, uh, links to their websites, coupon codes to save you money and everything else. That money actually helps us buy a new mic for, mic for Jeremy because I, he like <laughs> needs to go to an ear, nose, throat doctor. <laughs> no, it's just because this f***er, when I put it next to my mouth, is like right below my nose. So when I exhale, it's like, no, <laughs> it was by your f***ing eyebrow and it was still in ordinary sure, his whole loud. face is a nostril. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like that concave owl face, you know, so you can hear better, but also we can all hear him breathing. God, yeah. So, uh, advertisers, rooftop rewards program, the gun cult.com is where you can go to join our cult. You get the access to the edited, but unbleeped episode of the show every week, uh, access to the cult only Patreon group and all kinds of great rewards as well. There. And uh, what else? What I'm missing something. Rooftopper, Patreon, or Colt sponsors. Oh, and also our our website where you can order the shirt that Aaron's wearing, or I'm not wearing any WLS or gear, the for the I'm wearing. or the jacket that Aaron's wearing. All that stuff. Love it. Love WLS dot com. And uh, Josh, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me, man. It was awesome. <laughs> Glad yeah, to- stay fresh, cheese bag. What? <laughs> <laughs> me a cheese bag? Yeah, did. Yeah, hey, did. I like Cheetos. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, stay fresh. Cheese bag. Too. Josh, where can people find you guys online? Oh, uh, we're everywhere. Now we're on the YouTube and Instagram, and uh, we're on Patreon. If you want to support us on there, we also sell all of our uh, awesome shirts on uh, ballisticink.com. Very nice, very nice. And uh, you guys, let's see what's what's the most recent video that you guys did. I don't even know. I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was the uh, Taurus uh, TX22, actually. Oh, we're going to review a Taurus. Uh, a Taurus. Taurus. Soon. Yeah. Taurus. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, whatever. I'm from the South. It's Taurus. It's the uh, 454 Kasul Raging Hunter. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Raging Hunter. I think they're stepping uh-huh. up their game, man. I think that they are. Uh, I think the G3 is cool. I think the, you know, the G2C is cool. I think the Taurus TX22 is cool. I, th- I think they're putting out good products right now. Awesome, man. Join a gun-related advocacy group such as the Firearms Policy Coalition, Gunners of America, Second Amendment Foundation. The NRA has been doing a couple things in Virginia. We will uh, see where that goes from there. We give out the suicide prevention line. The number is 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-TALK, or you can text the number 741741. We're here live every week on Mondays and Wednesdays, except for when we're not, because f- we, we like sometimes it happens. But we're on demand every day. Get the podcast. We like shooting.com slash show is where you go to subscribe. And as we always say, thanks for listening. Get some medical training and pew, 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 pew. Shoot straight. Hey, fresh feedback. So those gun parts I ordered the other day, Sean. I pay for the expedited shipping. What? The uh, gun parts I ordered the other day with your help. We, we were doing that whole code thing. Oh, yeah. And I paid for the extra fast shipping. Yeah. It just shipped today. That sounds great. Yeah, but I bought it the other day. Yeah, but that's your fault, not theirs. No, it's totally their fault for not shipping it faster. <laughs> like, when you pay for fast shipping, it should be shipped that day fast. The only thing that I wrote down for the title of this show is Flex on Poor Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's about right I like it Have you tried not being a poor? <laughs> it's very it's very hard When you are so. <laughs> But have you tried not? See, people don't think it be like it is But it do But it do did And it did Why yeah. is this f- still playing? No, I'll be honest with you This is, this is what happens, okay? It has nothing to do with being poor. It has to do with priorities. Well, this is the thing. So, Small Josh is a collector. 
okay? He gets everything. He buys everything. And I don't. I buy a couple that I know I'm going to use, and that's about it. Unless I'm getting it for free or something like that, I ain't buying I buy what I know I have to have to make work. Did you think that show was worth a dollar? Help the cast by visiting lovewls.com.